I just spat a little. Sorry about that. Well, how's it people? So someone requested that I do a video on like the do's and don'ts of teaching in Korea. And you know, when, when you ask for something, I give it to you. Wait, no, no, I, I shouldn't say that. I mean, it, it depends on what you ask for. But since it is officially the start of the new school year, I thought, yeah, this is good timing to make this video. Now, if you've just started teaching in Korea, you are probably still introducing yourself to your students, which means later this week or probably next week, you're going to start teaching like an actual teacher. Yeah, scary stuff. But don't worry, I've been there, done that, and I'm here to help you. God damn it, I'm nice. Just a disclaimer before I begin, I am not a qualified teacher. The information that I give you is purely based from all the experience I've gained since 2011 when I started teaching English in Korea. And yeah, you, some of you are going to watch this video and think some of the information I give you is kind of obvious. But you know, sometimes things that seem so obviously obvious are not so obvious. And I've just used the word obvious so many times now that I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. Okay, so let's start with the do. This is probably the most important do of them all. I cannot even express how important this is. So important. Guys, this is important. How many times have I said important? Yeah, that's because it's pretty important. Communicate with your co-teacher. Communication is key. From the very first day when he or she gives you your textbook, find out exactly what it is that they expect from you. Find out exactly what they want you to focus on in the textbook. Discuss with them what their role entails in the classroom. Hashtag never forget communication is key. Tattoo it on your forehead. I don't care. Just never forget that communication is key. Another very important do while we're on the topic of co-teachers is use your co-teacher. They are there. Use them. I've noticed that when I involve my co-teacher in my class, the students get way more into the lesson. I don't know, it's like they, they just enjoy seeing their co-teacher getting involved. So whether it's, you know, doing a demo of the dialogue with your co-teacher or like making them participate in the game somehow. Design your lesson so that your teacher is somehow involved. I mean, you know, that is kind of the definition of a co-teacher, the teacher who teaches with you, you know? So yeah make them teach with you okay let's move on to a don't now again this is going to seem obvious to you honey badger don't care yo do not be unprepared let me tell you something those kids they can sense it they're like hounds they can sense when you are unprepared don't ever think that because they're Kids, they'll never know if I'm a little bit unprepared today. No, they know. Guys, it's so easy to be prepared. Basically, you've got a 40 hour working week and 22 of those hours are teaching hours, which means you've got the remaining hours, however many hours that is, because you know, maths, just no. Just know. You've got those remaining hours. And you can use those office hours to prepare your lessons. You've got time. Use it. Connected to being prepared is be flexible. Because welcome to Korea. Man, do things change as often as I change my underwear. Which is very often, if you're wondering. One minute you'll be told that your classes are cancelled, the next minute you'll be told that they've been uncancelled and you've got five classes again. 
always have things prepared learn how to think on your toes let's go on to another do be confident in your teaching if you only know what i was like when i first started in 2011 <laughs> those were dark times those were dark times i had zero self-esteem i had no confidence i was so shy i was just scared of everything yes those were those were dark times and because i was not confident in my teaching the students immediately in me i told you they're like hounds they sensed it immediately and they never took me seriously they never really listened but i don't know what happened over time and maybe it was experience in the classroom i don't know but my confidence grew and i've noticed now because i am more confident now and i have a teacher's voice which i have perfected i have their attention all the time develop a teacher's voice be confident also in conjunction with this be confident point be entertaining when you are a teacher in korea you're kind of like an edutainer you're educating them in an entertaining way if you have a free lesson take a walk around the school and peep into the other korean teachers classes whether it's a math class science class whatever and you will notice that the korean teacher he basically just stands there at the front of the class by the tv and just lectures for 45 minutes even though i'm a middle school teacher just by the way i'm a middle school teacher i'm still jumping around and acting like a crazy person in class in conjunction with my teaching i am never just standing in one spot in my class i'm constantly changing my location in class and i i notice that every time i change my location they actually turn around to see that like, where the hell is sam going now and it's good because they're focused on me and they're listening to me and they're i have their attention just remember that acquiring english as a second language is very very daunting for these students it is getting better but korean students are still incredibly shy and their confidence is still kind of low when it comes to speaking english and when it comes to talking to foreign people you've got to take away that scary factor and you've got to make english fun you've got to make it something that they want to do don't worry about focusing on grammar few people have asked me about this and they seem kind of worried because they're like how on earth am i going to teach them english grammar take a deep breath and out don't worry you do not have to focus on grammar there are different sections in the textbook but you will focus on listening and speaking let me just cut right now to the textbook so as you can see i have my middle school english textbook this is my second graders textbook which is grade eight so if you look at lesson one dear future me it is divided into different parts like you've got listen and speak one and listen and speak to and then you've got the reading section you've got the grammar section you've got the writing section and the project section but like i said you don't have to worry about all those other parts you probably have to worry about listen and speak one and listen and speak to and in my case i also have to cover uh, bring together and let's communicate because it is related to speaking as well as you can see here you've got a listen and choose and can you see the little headphones here this textbook comes with a cd they've got to listen to audio clips they've got to answer questions based on that audio clip and as you can imagine that goes pretty fast same with b goes pretty fast because they're listening to a clip and answering questions and then you've got c practice with your partner which is basically a very plain and simple dialogue with a key expression that's where your creative juices need to come in you've got to spice this up you've got to basically use these pages as your foundation for your 45 minute lesson 
you've got to flesh it out especially this dialogue you've got to spice it up and that depends on you whether you want to make a fun activity game role play i don't know it's up to you and yeah that's about it the textbook is very boring i'm not gonna lie so you need to make it way more exciting that's what's so great about your role is you get to be very creative the last big fat no no do not please listen to me promise me you will never do this promise okay do not give out sweets to your students oh my god I don't know what it is about us foreign teachers, but we tend to give out sweets to our students. And let me tell you something. Number one, it's going to bankrupt you. Number two, you are spoiling the students because what happens is they start expecting sweets. In fact, what they do is they enter your class saying, teacher candy. And let me tell you something. When you hear that teacher candy, you're going to want to smash a table. If you want to make a reward system, think of a different way of motivating your students. What I've started doing now, I have a sticker system. What I do is if they give me a correct answer in class, I give them a sticker. They're still getting something, but after they reach that goal of 20 stickers. Also, it becomes a kind of like a competition. Everyone wants to be the first to get 20 stickers. So it adds to the excitement. But whatever reward system you want to do, there are so many different things you can do. Just promise me, you will not give out candies. And I think I'll bring the do's and don'ts of teaching to an end there. Don't forget that we are all different. So what works for me might not work for someone else. What works for someone else might not work for me. It completely depends on you. What I give you is not the gospel truth. Just take it as advice. If you are starting to teach in Korea, good luck! you'll be just fine. And before you know it, you will be a pro in the classroom. If you thought the video was helpful, please give it a like. If you are already a teacher in Korea, please don't forget to comment and tell me what you think is important and not important in the classroom, uh, what has worked for you, what hasn't worked for you. Don't forget to follow me on all the social medias. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I will see you next week with another video. Goodbye.